Friends, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today's show in Georgia, where the Republicans have pulled off a victory in the most expensive congressional race in history. In a special election in Georgia's 6th District, Republican Karen Handel won nearly 53 percent of the vote, defeating her challenger, Democrat John Ossoff, to be to fill the seat left vacant after Tom Price resigned to become Secretary of Health and Human Services. The candidates and outside groups spent more than $55 million on the race, a record-shattering amount. While the seat has been held by a Republican for decades, Democrats were hoping to pull off an upset in the suburban Atlanta district, where President Trump's approval rating is just 35 percent. This marks the fourth congressional race Democrats have lost since the election of Trump. Speaking Tuesday night, Handel thanked President Trump. I need to also thank Speaker Ryan and the House leadership and so many of the members across this country who also united to help us hold the sixth. And a special thanks to the President of the United States. Karen Handel is the former Secretary of State of Georgia. She made national headlines in 2012 when she led an effort at the breast cancer charity Susan G. Komen to cut off funding for Planned Parenthood. She later resigned from the organization after the board voted to restore the money following public outcry. On Tuesday night, Handel's challenger, 30-year-old Democrat John Ossoff, also addressed supporters. And we showed the world that in places where no one thought it was even possible to fight, we could fight. We showed them what courage and kindness and humility are capable of. We showed them that we can still build coalitions of people who may not see eye to eye on everything, but rather than demonizing each other, we find common ground to move forward. And that's the only way this country will move forward. We go now to Atlanta, where we're joined by two guests. The Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock is senior pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, which was the spiritual home of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, he's also the chair of the New Georgia Project. Nan Orak is also with us, a Democratic state senator in Georgia. Her Senate District 36 includes downtown Atlanta. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Let's begin with Dr. Raphael Warnock. What happened in Atlanta? It was very close, but in the end, the Republican pulled it out. And, Dr. and uh, Karen Handel, uh, in her acceptance speech and her victory speech last night, thanked President Trump as people chanted, Trump, Trump. Well, good to be here with you, uh, Amy, even on a day like this. Um, we have to play for the long game. Um, uh, we were very focused uh, on this election. Indeed, the whole country has been focused on this special election uh, here in Georgia. Uh, I do think we have to keep in mind that this has been a solid Republican uh, district for a very long time, for about four decades. Uh, so this was an uphill journey uh, from the beginning. Uh, the fact that this was actually a real race, that um, that this this was uh, that there was serious movement uh, on the left. Uh, can only be accounted for uh, with reference to Donald Trump. Uh, so there is deep unrest in the country. Uh, his uh, approval rating is very low, uh, even in that district. I, I, I found it very interesting and curious that Karen Handel uh, virtually ran away from the president during the campaign uh, and ran toward him last night during her victory speech. So we'll continue to, to make the case. Uh, as chair of the New Georgia Project, we're very focused on expanding uh, the electorate. I, I believe that our social vision will be as narrow as the electorate is. And what we've witnessed over the last few years, especially uh, after the gutting of the Voting Rights uh, Act, uh, is the effort of, of Republican legislatures all across the country to make it very difficult for black, brown, poor people, old people, young people to register and to vote. And that's the work of the New Georgia Project. Uh, and that's the work we'll continue to do 
uh, in the next several months, even uh, the next few years. We've registered 215,000 new voters uh, since 2014. We hope to register about a million by the end of the decade. Nan Arak, your response to what took place in this staggeringly, um, staggeringly um, expensive congressional race, the most expensive race in the history, congressional race in the history of this country? We are, of course, uh, disappointed, but at the same time very mindful, as Pastor Warnock said, that this has been a deep red district since 1979. And for John Ossoff to even attempt to score in this congressional district uh, is remarkable, and his performance is remarkable. Uh, we, the activity that we saw on the ground, the outpouring, uh, uh, it, it awakened the electorate in the Congressional District 6 that thought it had nowhere to go. Uh, the uh, diversity of his support and the intensity, the enthusiasm, I can't remember when I've seen such an enthusiastic, uh, sustained uh, effort uh, here in this state. And it, the way I look at it, uh, Amy, is that, uh, no, we didn't take the seat last night. We worked in a way, and John Ossoff presented a candidacy that, the, that demanded that the Republicans go all out, leave no, no holes barred no, uh, to, to take the seat, as they did last night, with a very flawed candidate, frankly, Karen Handel, who, as Secretary of State, presided over blocking people from voting. Uh, she had the Justice Department reprimanding her for her attempt to eliminate voters from the rolls. Uh, and I—, I uh, I have to say, we've had a battle here in Georgia around access to the ballot. We were one of the first states in 2005, the Republican-controlled legislature, with the Republican governor, Sonny Perdue, uh, put into law a voter ID uh, that was just onerous. Uh, we've sued, we've thought about it. It did have the effect of waking people up to say, they're not going to take my right to vote. And it's, uh, uh, we, we're continuing to battle to bring out the electorate here that's going to turn this state blue. And I see last night, I see this prolonged, a months long battle over this, uh, trying to flip the six as a, a real uh, lay in the groundwork for, as the ladies out there in Cobb are saying, the Democratic women that have organized themselves into uh, pave it blue. Uh, we're going to pave it blue. And you're going to see right in this congressional district winning seats. We're going to take seats from uh, Democrat, from Republicans in the elections for next year's General Assembly seats, Senate and House, because of the energy, the infrastructure, and the hope that has been restored uh, in that district that, that there's somebody else out there besides this deep red uh, GOP anti-people uh, sort of agenda. Um, this was the district of Newt Gingrich before Dr. Price, and he won by, what, something like 23 percent um, right. uh, uh, when he won, uh, but then he resigned to become the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Um, Romney won by something like that, you know, percentage, uh, 23 percent more. Uh, but Trump, in 2016, won by something like one, just over one percent. That's and right. And yet you That's have right. Karen Handel uh, thanking Trump and the crowd chanting Trump. Has it been a change in these few months? I think the Republicans are embattled. Uh, you, 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 this is the, the, the administration. Uh, that we've witnessed uh, over these uh, last months. I mean, everybody in Washington in the administration is lawyering up right now. Uh, and I, I, I think that uh, in, the, in the deep red uh, Trump supporter base, uh, they're rallying around him. But that base is shrinking. That's what the numbers tell us. That base is shrinking. Well, and, and I think we have to keep in mind that uh, part of what Karen Handel won for herself last night is the opportunity to have to run again. Um, uh, in the fall of 2018. I'm not about to predict what will happen uh, for that race. That's a long time off. Uh, but uh, her thanking Donald Trump uh, might be the basis of an interesting commercial in 2018 as we witness uh, uh, the scandals of the Trump administration unfold, and, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, but she might live to regret those words. Hmm. Um, 
But in terms of what took place, uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock, the issue of gerrymandering, can you talk about what's happening in Atlanta, in Georgia? Yeah, well, I, as, as the Voting Rights Act uh, was gutted by the Supreme Court uh, a few summers ago, uh, many of us have been really having to fight the, the good fight on the ground. Uh, as uh, Senator Orrock pointed out, even before that happened, as, in 2005, uh, Georgia has uh, the, the distinction mm -hmm. of, of, of leading the pack with, with making it hard for people to vote. So we've been fighting this issue for a long time. Uh, you know that uh, about a month ago, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that uh, racial gerrymandering in, this, in the case in North Carolina was unconstitutional. Uh, ironically, it was Clarence Thomas who cast uh, the, the deciding vote, decided with the majority. Uh, but this is going to be a real fight in the days ahead. You don't get people really excited talking about gerrymandering. It's not the sexiest issue. Uh, but it is one of the most consequential issues facing our democracy. Uh, there is a way in which uh, we have got to get uh, the people's voice back. A lot of us are very focused and concerned about this administration and asking the question, uh, have we turned into a kleptocracy? Uh, but beyond the kind of crude way in which you know, we're, we're not sure what the Trump administration is up to, and what kinds of resources that, that uh, they may be trying to extract from our democracy. In a real sense, the people's voices uh, have been stolen a long time ago. We're, we're living in a kind of kleptocracy. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not excited about the fact that this was the most expensive congressional race uh, in history. There's a disconnect between what the people want and what we get. How is it uh, that most Americans want reasonable gun reform? Mm -hmm. uh, but we can't get reasonable gun reform legislation in our country. Uh, it is because of the outsized voice of corporatist interests, the gun lobby, uh, too much money in our elections, racial gerrymandering. All of these issues we'll have to fight. And the way we're fighting it in the New Georgia Project is to register as many people as we can. We think that part of the answer to voter suppression is massive voter mobilization and registration. <laughs> while also addressing these other public policy issues um, at the state capitol and, and otherwise. Karen Handel is known around the country, not so much as secretary of state, the past secretary of state of Georgia, Nan Arak, but um, uh, as the woman who tried to stop the funding of Planned Parenthood when she was at Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. There was a massive outcry across the country. She was tossed out. But do, how does this—what kind of omen is this for Planned Parenthood? Because right now you have the Senate health care plan that's supposedly going to be released on Thursday morning. Interestingly, McConnell only announced this after the results were in in Georgia, leading many to believe he understood this is quite controversial. And, of course, a part of that is the issue of defunding Planned Parenthood. What kind of message does this send? Well, you know, it's it's very interesting. I was with the Center for Reproductive uh, uh, Rights uh, last week in Washington with women legislators and activists from around the country, and the uh, polling numbers are very startling. Uh, over 40 percent of Republicans uh, support the right to abortion and uh, ma maintaining Roe v. Wade, and the numbers are astronomical uh, among Democrats. It's another example, uh, as Pastor Warnock said, of where uh, the, the mass of people are on one side of this issue, and yet you have this narrow, reactionary, uh, anti-people agenda that's being driven by the GOP, and they have been well served by gerrymandering. Uh, we uh, really launched uh, and mobilized against them in the session here this uh, uh, several months ago here in the General Assembly to smash their re uh, their bill to reapportion. You know, they go, go around now, and they're not satisfied with reapportioning every 10 years after the census. Whenever one of their people are in trouble, they go in and want to tweak the district and move African-American voters, uh, move Democratic voters out of that district. And they, they tried that with a bill this session. They called a surprise meeting at 8 in the morning with not even 24 hours notice. And do you know, we packed that room, almost 200 people packed into that room, and they folded their tents, and that bill 
still did not become law. But the, so there's more attention being paid now to this out, outlandish gerrymandering and the way that they uh, are, are controlling <laughs> seats. And, in, and, and as has been demonstrated, it makes for polarized politics when people don't have to come together in the middle to look for solutions. Racial gerrymandering, placing polling stations uh, in uh, police stations, uh, the kinds of abuse we witness in Quitman County. I would encourage your, your viewers to Google Quitman County and voting rights. If you read that story, it will read like something out of the 1950s. And this was literally just a couple years ago here in Georgia as the NAACP and other grassroots organizers simply focused on registering people to vote, in some cases their own family members. One woman uh, spoke and signed for her uh, father. Uh, who uh, was uh, uh, unable to uh, sign the application. I believe he was blind or something. But literally, people facing criminal charges That's right. uh, for trying to give voice to ordinary people. So we've but got to build a big tent, a broad coalition of women, yeah. poor people, uh, minorities, on that uh, issue, young people. On that issue yes. of a broad tent, uh, do you think, Dr. Raphael Warnock, that um, Ossoff represented—I mean, is this not just a battle between Republicans and Democrats, but the heart of the Democratic Party? Uh, right now, massive issue in the country is the issue of health care. Um, he was opposed to single-payer health care. Many felt he was running away from a progressive Democratic platform as he ran against the Republican candidate. Candidate. Uh, do you think this is a message to the Democratic Party, almost like the Hillary uh, Bernie Sanders divide, that they're going in the wrong direction? Well, I'll let the politicians get into the, the uh, mix of, of how to, you know, win an election. Uh, I'm a progressive. Uh, these are the issues that I'll continue to fight for. Uh, I believe that it's a shame that in the richest country in the world, we don't have universal health care. But it's not just a moral issue. It's really impractical. We, we continue to try in the United States to pull something off that, that hasn't worked anywhere, and that is this idea that you take health care and throw it, throw it into the marketplace. I think the market is good for some things, but this idea that the market is a panacea, a cure-all for all ills, is a, is a kind of, of, uh, of religious doctrine and fanaticism. Uh, that I don't embrace as a person of faith. I mean, we bring a critical eye even to our faith, but there, there are some folk who seem to think that the market is the answer to everything. And yet, in order to get here, we drove through streets that all of us pay for. Uh, we turned on our water fountain, and we were assured that that water was protected, because there are some things that we have to do together. And, and health care— uh, is something that we, we ought to make sure well, that everybody has, has access to. Well, finally, let me put that question to Nan Arak, Democratic state senator in Georgia, representing downtown Atlanta. Politico saying the biggest beneficiary of the progressive resistance opposes a push for single-payer health care or hiking income taxes. What about this? What about people saying that the Democrat ran away from core Democratic values and that this isn't really a referendum on where the Democrats could be in this country? country. Well, I, I am not going to Monday morning quarterback on John Ossoff's race, which was a remarkable race, uh, an incredible gain from where the last Republican that ran was 22 points up, and we were two points uh, lower than 50 percent in a race that was not supposed to ever even be feasible. Uh, he had to win Republican votes. He one, I believe, one out of ten Republican votes took the um, uh, uh, undecided, you know, the independents, uh, uh, at least split them, and fought to expand the Democratic electorate. I talked last night, uh, Amy, with a young uh, Latina uh, woman who was actually had fought every day in this campaign, and she was in no way uh, downcast. She said, we did incredible grassroots uh, organizing. And we did special teams out to different communities and seeking out the different ethnicities uh, that are in this very uh, uh, district that's very diverse. Now, let me say this. Georgia is over 30 percent uh, African-American uh, citizenship. This district is 25 percent right. people of color, 25, right. 75. And we did that kind of performance there. Uh, 
things are on the move and things are changing. I was speaking last night with a, uh, our candidate for governor, Stacey Abrams, who's going to mount a remarkable campaign, is already out there uh, on the campaign trail. And we're going to see history made in Georgia. Uh, the other thing is that Georgia used to be totally in the backwater when it came to national politics. We didn't have uh, uh, Obama money in this state. We didn't have any Clinton money to, to, to speak of in this state in these last two big presidential contests. Uh, but yet and still, we were one of the most purple of the red states. Uh, uh, this campaign has continued the trajectory of waking up the nation about coming to Georgia and working here to turn this state around. Uh, we're, we're in a state where the governor didn't expand Medicare. We have Medicaid uh, expansion was never done here. We have a huge uh, number, one of the top numbers of uninsured people uh, in this state. And uh, I think the future is bright, the future is blue in Georgia, at the risk of sounding uh, like a bumper sticker. But what I saw in this campaign, and I had close family members that worked in it every day, got up and went out and knocked on doors all day long. Hmm. Uh, the enthusiasm, the layers of people, uh, if, you, if you could have been at that hotel last night, you couldn't get in, uh, the, the, the cars were backed up. I mean, you would never would have expected that in that district. And so, so we, people are awake in Georgia and we're moving in the right direction and we're going to see that in next year's statewide elections for these uh, top offices. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us, Nan Arak, Democratic State Senator in Georgia, and Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock of the Ebenezer Baptist Church. This is thank Democracy you. Now! Thank you so much for being there. Um, when we come back, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, publisher of The Nation, on uh, what this race means and broader issues around the country, as the Republicans secretly craft a health care bill in the Senate. It will be revealed in the next few days. What does this mean for this country and other issues? Stay with us.